so you know we have a nifty geometrical interpretation of the product rule. Let's see if we can adapt it a little bit and use it for the quotient rule. So let's see if we can draw a picture uh, helping us understand why the quotient rule is true. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little trick again. I'm going to say this is equal to Q of X and here Q stands for quotient. And if this is the case, then this statement here is equivalent to the statement f of x is equal to q of x times g of x. Aha. Uh -huh. And now this, this is pretty easy for me to make a picture for. What this means is I have a rectangle. Here's my rectangle. And this side has length q of x, while this side has length g of x. And the area of this rectangle is f of x. Now the question is, how does the area change as x changes a little bit? And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, what if the area is increased by this much here and this much here? Here's the increase in the area. And we need this to be an increase as f increases. So this is going to be, this is going to be a new quantity. It's going to be here, g of x plus h. That's what that is. And down here, we're going to have q of x plus h. Here we need to use a little trick. Here we need a little trick. Now, you may have seen this before, but I'm going to show you again. g of x plus h minus g of x is approximately g prime of x times h when h is small. Now why is this so? Well, think about the limit definition of the derivative. We know that g prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. And what's it mean for the limit to be going to 0? It means that h is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So this means that when h is small, g prime of x is approximately g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. Aha! So now all I have to do is multiply both sides by h and I get the approximation that I need. g prime of x times h is approximately g of x plus h minus g of x. A similar argument, an entirely similar argument will show that q prime of x times h is approximately q of x plus h minus q of x. All right, now let's use our, put our trick into action with our area that we've been uh, working on. So now we can replace, we can, we can label this side here because this is the difference between q of x plus h and q of x as q prime of x times h. And we can label this little side here as g prime of x times h, which means we can get estimates on these areas here. And these areas are how this rectangle is increasing. 
uh, the area of this rectangle is increasing as we increase h. And so this area is going to be q of x times g prime of x times h. This area here is going to be g of x times q prime of x times h. And this area here, right there, is going to be g prime of x times q prime of x times h squared. But we know something else. We know this whole area here that I'm going to now shade in orange. All three of these pieces together are equal to f prime of x times h. Because the entire area is equal to f of x plus h, and this area here is equal to f of x, and we know that the, these are approximately equal, approximately the same, when h is small. Putting our areas together from our uh, previous work, we see that we have f prime of x times h is equal to q of x times g prime of x times h plus g of x times q prime of x times h plus g prime of x times q prime of x times h squared. Now look, every term has an h in it, so let's go ahead and cancel those. Cancel, 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 except for this one because there's two h's, so we'll keep one of them around. Next line, f prime of x is equal to q of x times g prime of x plus g of x times q prime of x plus g prime of x times q prime of x times h. And what do we remember about h? Is that it's really small. It's small. So this term can, can be forgotten about. And so now we're going to keep on we want to know what q prime is, so we're going to keep on solving for q prime. And so I can write f prime of x minus q of x times g prime of x equals g of x times q prime of x. Now wait, what's q of x? It's equal to f of x over g of x. So we have f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x all over g of x is equal to g of x times q prime of x. So now multiply both sides by g of x and we're going to find f prime of x times, oh, divide both sides by g of x, sorry, by g of x minus f of x times g prime of x over g of x squared is equal to q prime of x. And now we're going to combine these fractions to get f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x all over g of x squared is equal to q prime of x. And what's q prime of x? From our definition, it's equal to d over dx of f of x over g of x. And this is our friend, the quotient rule. So there we have it, a geometrical interpretation of why the quotient rule is true. Time to do some more math.